this video, I'm going to try and make nickel sulfate. Now, maybe you know, or maybe you don't, that nickel sulfate is a useful chemical if you want to do some nickel plating. So, you would want to do this, uh, possibly for that reason or some other. But anyway, here's the reaction that I'm going to attempt. It's simply nickel reacting with sulfuric acid to form nickel sulfate and some hydrogen gas. Now, although that looks very simple and uncomplicated, in reality, the reaction does not seem to proceed or it proceeds very slowly under normal conditions, like if you put the acid uh, in a beaker and immerse the nickel into it, uh, the reaction may not occur at all. It needs a little help. So I found that uh, using electricity to push the reaction along uh, gives the desired result. So when I balance out the uh, equation here, for every gram of nickel that is used, you'll need to use 1.671 grams of sulfuric acid, and that will produce, theoretically, 2.636 grams of nickel sulfate. That would be the anhydrous nickel sulfate. Um, you're probably going to end up with it in the hexahydrate state, which would actually be 4.478 grams for every gram of nickel. And I have done this in the past, but I did not record it. It's been a couple years ago, and uh, I don't have very good notes on it. So uh, I might have to uh, go by feel as I go through this. Now, you may be wondering, where can you get nickel? Well, here's my solution. This is nickel welding rod, and it says that it's 99% nickel. I'll show you what they look like. These metal rods, but they have a flux coating on them, and you'll need to remove that before you do anything. Now, there's a cautionary uh, message about nickel and nickel compounds, is that um, it's known to be very toxic it can produce severe allergic reactions to your skin if you get a nickel compound on it, something soluble like nickel sulfate. It's also very dangerous to your lungs if you get the powder in your lungs. Um, it can even cause cancer, especially if you live in California because everything causes cancer there, as we all know. So. What you want, how I remove the uh, flux from these is simply taking a rod, laying it against a piece of iron, and hitting it with a hammer, and it will crumble off, and you get these nice, clean uh, nickel rods. However, I would strongly advise that you wear a dust mask when you do that, so you're not inhaling any of that powder. I don't know what the flux is made of, but there's a good chance there's at least a little bit of nickel in it. So the plan is to use these two nickel rods as my electrodes in my electrochemical reaction. Um, first thing I want to do is weigh them so I have a record of how much nickel I'm starting the reaction with. So here I have my scale and this uh, cylinder has been zeroed out. So I'll just weigh those now. I have 23.88 grams, and I'll uh, use that for future reference. So this is the sulfuric acid that I'm going to use. Now what this is is uh, automotive uh, battery acid. And uh, I've measured the density of it, 
and uh, from that calculated that the uh, concentration is about 34 percent sulfuric acid. So I'll be using that number as a rough approximation as to how much acid I'm going to be needing. So previously I weighed my nickel rods and I'm going to just under the assumption that I'm going to use up about half of the nickel here. So I'm not going to keep running until the rods are completely dissolved because that would be impossible. So I'll say approximately one half of them will be used, which is about 12 grams. And uh, as the reaction proceeds, I, I intend on turning them over so I can um, dissolve them from both ends. But anyway, assuming I use 12 grams of nickel, from this equation, that means um, 12 times 1.671 means I'll use about 20 grams of sulfuric acid. So if it's 34%, I divide 20 by 0 0.34. I'm going to need about 59 grams of my sulfuric acid. Now I don't know if the reaction will actually go all the way to completion and consume all of the sulfuric acid. But for now, I'll just assume it will. So I'll measure out uh, about 59 grams of this acid. Close enough. So I'm going to be using this 250 milliliter flask and uh, I'm going to add my acid into the flask as the first item. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, add more water and uh, bring it up uh, to the 250 milliliter reference line. Just so there will be more of the uh, nickel rod in contact with the liquid. I'm also going to be using this number six two hole rubber stopper to hold the rods in position. I put one rod through each hole and one more little uh, helper I have here is a, a little card with two holes in it that just fits snugly over the rods and are spaced exactly to fit the holes in the stopper. I'm just going to put a little cotton in here to help uh, hold the card up as well. The idea is that as the hydrogen gas is produced, I want to allow it to escape. So I don't want it airtight, but I do want to prevent any uh, uh, bubbles or anything from uh, splashing around. Just to keep it contained. I think that'll work. Now, <clears throat> the electricity is going to come from my uh, uh, regulated DC power supply, which I'm going to show you now. That's this thing here. And I can not only adjust the voltage, but I can also set the current limit. So uh, I'll be hooking this up to the nickel electrodes. I'm going to slowly increase the voltage and, and see if I can uh, see any reaction. Okay, I've already hit the current limit at 0.6 volts. I do see bubbles coming off the cathode. That would be the hydrogen. 
So this doesn't take much voltage. I may bring the uh, current up a little bit more. There's 200 milliamps. I think one thing you want to look for is if you see any uh, bubbles coming off the anode or the positive lead, you probably are running too much voltage and you're just decomposing the water. So I would keep it below that. I'll push it a little further to see, uh, see if we can cause that, then back it down. There's one volt. Still no sign of any bubbles from the anode. It's very sense the current's very sensitive to voltage. There's 800 milliamps and only 1.2 volts. Oh, suddenly the current stopped. I wonder why. Do I have a loose connection? That's perplexing. I think what I'll do is uh, remove the electrodes, give them a good cleaning, and then start over. Maybe there's some kind of uh, oxide layer built up, possibly on the anode. So what I did was I took out the anode electrode, uh, gave it a good scrubbing, put it back in, and I've turned the voltage down Right now it's about 0.7 volts, and everything's uh, running smoothly again. I'll keep a uh, close eye on the uh, current to see if it stays steady or if it drifts up or down. I'm pretty sure um, I formed an oxide layer on the anode, and that's why the conduction stopped. Um, it acts as an insulator. So, as I... Uh, may have mentioned I, I think the oxygen or the water will um, be decomposed if you run the voltage too high releasing the oxygen which will oxidize the anode anyway that's my speculation Point 0.8 volts we'll see if that works I'll zoom in and let you get a closer look at the reaction So it's presently nearly uh, 4 p.m., about 3.52. So we'll just let this run for a while and see how it goes. So it's been about two hours, and uh, I did play around with the voltage a little bit. I noticed at 0.8 the current was slowly decreasing. So I cleaned the, uh, cleaned the anode and... Uh, set it down to 0.5 volts but I noticed it still decreased uh, slowly so I went back to 0.7 volts and that seems to be the best compromise in my opinion um, so that's where I've been running for most of the time and uh, so what I'm going to do now well first I'll show you that the current is stabilized at about 32 milliamps 
So what I'm going to do now is temporarily shut it down. Now my assumption is that the material is coming off of the cathode and forming the nickel sulfate. But I'm going to try and verify that by weighing both of the electrodes. And um, I, unfortunately, I didn't weigh both, or didn't weigh them individually to begin with. But if we assume they were the same weight, it would have been 11.94 grams a piece. So we'll see how close they are to that and see if which one, if any, has lost any mass. So this is the anode. So I'll dry that off and weigh that first. I guess I should zero that out first. That would make more sense. Eleven point seven five. So that's a little bit below eleven point nine four, but I don't know. Like I say, I didn't weigh them individually, so that could be the original weight. So now for the cathode. I did mark the cathode with a marker so I wouldn't get them mixed up. Eleven point nine seven. Well, maybe it's coming from the anode. I don't know why that would be, but it's going very slowly. I do detect a slight green tint to the solution now. I don't know if you can see it, green or blue. I don't know how to make this go any faster. It would help if the electrodes had more surface area, but this is what I have. So I'll set it back up and uh, let it continue. So here we are, up and running again, and it's uh, almost 6 o'clock. So we'll check back a little bit later and see what's happened. Well, a couple more hours have gone by, and I did look at it about a half hour ago, and it was still running. Now I see that the current is all the way to zero. So uh, this is a strange, uh, a strange thing to figure out just what goes on. Um, I did play around with the voltage some uh, just after I cut off the last uh, video clip. And uh, I found that temporarily reversing the polarity for about 30 seconds and then putting it back would tend to clear things uh, off the electrodes and it, it would go better. And actually I found that, uh, well, I'm up at one volt now and uh, that seemed to work better. I think it's because there's more nickel uh, ions in the solution now and that's helping but for some reason, right now it's stopped. So, first thing I'm going to do is reverse polarity. There we go. Three hundred and eighty milliamps. It's dropping quickly. I'll give it about 30 seconds, then I'll switch the polarity back. Then what I want to do is, is weigh the electrodes again, just so I can confirm which one is actually uh, giving up the nickel. Okay. Now as you see, I switched the polarity back, and now it's running again. But anyway, I'm going to shut it down and uh, weigh each of the electrodes now that I have uh, the good numbers from the previous test and see just what's going on. Okay, so 
removing the cathode, I'll dry that off. Now before, it was 11.98 grams. Let me turn my scale back on. It says it's 11.96 grams. So almost no change. Now here's the anode. And I can I can feel that it's been eroded away some. It was previously 11.77. Now it's 11.53. So the nickel is coming off of the anode, however, very slowly. So at the beginning I said that just heating the solution alone wouldn't drive the reaction. But I'm thinking I might try heat along with electricity to get this uh, to move along faster. Because this is taking uh, a very long time, much longer than I would like. So I'll set that up. Okay, so here I am set up on the hot plate. And uh, still at one volt, currently 181 milliamps. Bubbles coming off of the cathode. First I'll check the temp. It says about 18.819 C. So now I'll turn on some heat. Now I don't want to boil it. Maybe I'll aim for uh, 80 degrees C and see if this goes faster. Okay, so it's about 35 minutes or so later. Things have warmed up here, and the as it was warming, I was watching the current, and it has increased dramatically. Now I'm at my current limit maximum of almost one amp, and uh, so that's as far as this supply will go. Uh, it's bubbling very vigorously on the cathode. The anode has taken on sort of a black color. I'll give the temperature a check. Flask is uh, about 74 C. The surface of the hot plate is about 100 C. So I think that will be good enough. It, I don't think it'll boil. Uh, so I'm just going to let it uh, proceed. I don't think I can uh, make it go any faster. So we'll let it go for a while. Maybe at 10 o'clock or so, I'll check uh, the weight of the anode again and see how much nickel has been consumed. So it's about 9.30. So with just a little bit of research, I did uh, learn that I can safely run my voltage up uh, a little higher as long as I don't go over about 1.2 volts. I'm not going to be splitting any water molecules. So uh, I don't think that was the original problem. Um, I did also discover another button on my power supply where I was on the low current range. I can actually go much higher than 1 amp. but. Uh, I, I don't need to right now. I'm about 1.1 volts and the uh, current is just under 1 amp. Uh, I do have the temperature up there. I did have it up to about uh, 78 C. It's dropped a little to 63. But uh, I'm going to weigh my uh, anode and maybe the cathode too. And then shut everything down for the night because it's getting rather late 
And I'm not going to leave this run while I'm sleeping. Notice that the uh, anode has definitely turned uh, black. It wipes right off. I wonder if that's nickel oxide. I'm going to have to investigate and see if nickel oxide is black. But it wipes off easily. So the weight is now 10.29 grams. So originally it was about uh, 11.9 grams. So I've lost about 1.6 grams on the anode which is a long way from the 12 grams that I wanted to react. Well, the cathode was just a little dark as well. Eleven point nine eight grams, so it has lost nothing. So all of the uh, Nickel is coming off of the anode. So that much is uh, something that is known for sure now. So to be continued tomorrow. So it's a new day, and I had an idea. So I modified the electrodes a little. I found a steel rod, uh, and I wound part of them around it so I can immerse more of the electrodes into the solution and maybe this will speed things up a little bit so I'll put it back together and start it up so it seems to be running pretty well but it's still cold so I'm, I'm gonna have to heat it up again so here we are about a half hour later and as you can see I've changed the setup a little bit I've added this clamp to my flask just to make sure I don't knock it over. And I've added some clothespins here to stabilize the wire. And I really recommend uh, that you go out and buy some clothespins, even if you don't wear clothes, because they're very handy for other things. My current is currently about an amp and a half, which is considerably more than I was running yesterday due to the increased surface area of my electrodes. Oh, here's one more thing. Um, I got this light. Maybe that'll uh, let you see those bubbles much uh, clearer. It's really going to town. So, one thing I've noticed is that the uh, volume inside the flask has increased a little bit, so that's probably going to be a problem soon. I may have to dump it out into a beaker and evaporate some of the water. But in the meantime, I've changed my mind about uh, weighing the anode again. I'm simply going to reverse the polarity and let it run some more. Now, I know the... Uh, Sulfuric acid is going to be depleting, and I'm not sure exactly um, if it'll uh, be all used up or, or what's going to happen. I'll probably just uh, go slower and slower, but uh, we'll see. So I'm going to change the polarity right now. Now maybe you can see it. The bubbles are now coming off of this electrode.
So it's a little past noon, and uh, going to shut things down because um, the liquid inside the beaker, or I mean the flask, is uh, getting too high. I've got to dump some of that out. So I'm going to evaporate some of the water using my trusty Mr. Coffee mug warmer. Meanwhile, I'll put this back together and continue on. Okay, so, so far six grams of nickel has been consumed. So after all this, I'm only halfway to where I want to be. So here it is several hours later, and uh, it slowed down quite a bit. I did make a mistake by not checking on it often enough, and um, a couple hours ago, the uh, electrode that was the uh, anode actually eroded completely into two. So I took that out and uh, sort of bent it back together and reattached it and now it's now it's operating as the cathode and uh, as you can see the solution is getting very dark green now so I think it's time for another weighing of the nickel Fourteen point eight five. Subtracting that from the original um, says that I've used nine point oh three grams of nickel. Well, at this point, uh, I may shut things down for the evening, and I'm going to have to figure out a way how I can maybe invert these because most of my nickel is now on this end, the upper ends, that have, that have been immersed are getting very thin. So that could be a problem. Okay, so it's day three. Uh, this has been running most of the day, so it's late afternoon, early evening on the third day. So I'm going to stop this now, and uh, whatever... It is, that's, that's going to be the end of the electrochemistry. So I'm going to dis disassemble this and I'll weigh all of the uh, remaining nickel. So I see that there has been some uh, small whiskers of presumably nickel that is sort of reformed on these uh, 
electrodes, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, I'll go ahead and weigh those now. So originally I had uh, 23.88 grams. The current weight is 12.25. Means I lost 11.63 grams of nickel, which was almost to my goal of 12 grams. I'm going to call that good. If I zoom in on the uh, product here, you can see that it's going to have to be filtered. There's some uh, black powder at the bottom, not too much. I assume that's nickel oxide, so I'll be filtering that out next. So I'm going to do a double filter, uh, two and one, coffee filter on top, then another funnel with cotton in the neck. So here's the result. I have right at 200 milliliters of nickel sulfate solution. And what I'm going to do next is try and uh, get some crystals to form by uh, driving off the water. And again, I'm going to use my Mr. Coffee mug warmer. Now, I'm not, I don't want it to boil. I just want it to evaporate. Now, this is the original uh, sheet that I showed at the beginning of the video. And I have a note on here that the crystals, the hexahydrate crystals form but only if the temperature is greater than 30.7 degrees Celsius. If it's below that, you get the heptahydrate. This will certainly keep the temperature above 30.7. So hexahydrate means that there are six water molecules in the crystal. Heptahydrate means there would be seven. So now we'll just let this set and uh, see what happens. So now it's the morning of day four. I did leave it on overnight, but I did put this beaker cover on it because I didn't want it to evaporate too quickly and, and be completely dry when I got up this morning. So it's lost only 50 milliliters just through the small opening here. I'll take the cover off now that I'm uh, up and awake and I can monitor it more closely. And as soon as I notice crystals forming, I may put this cover back on so it will go slowly and maybe the crystals will be larger. So the liquid level has fallen to about 80 milliliters. So no sign of crystals yet, but I'm going to put the beaker cover back on to make sure it goes very slowly. So it's the end of day four, and there's still no sign of any crystals. Finally, on day five, some crystals are starting. It's like some uh, anhydrous on top, but uh, I'll immerse that and rehydrolyze it. So it's been a few days, and uh, I've abandoned trying to use Mr. Coffee uh, mug warmer to get the crystals to form, mainly because um, it was drying too fast, and they were, they were too small, and it was tending to crust over with the anhydrous form. I did manage to get three small crystals um, out of there that don't look too bad, but other than that, um, I took the rest of it and put it back into solution and let it set in the beaker for a few days. It did crystallize uh, fairly nicely. However, the crystals being, now they're heptahydrate instead of hexahydrate because they crystallized at the lower temperature. 
So uh, they look different. They're more needle-like, where the hexahydrate was more uh, blocky, like a little uh, emerald or something. So now originally, um, my equation uh, balanced so that one gram of nickel would produce 4.47 grams of the hexahydrate. But in the heptahydrate, I get 4.785 grams per gram of nickel. So going back to what I measured, that I used 11.63 grams of the nickel, I should expect to get 55.65 grams of the nickel sulfate heptahydrate. Now this is not completely dry. It's uh, sort of uh, sort of damp, and I I sort of anticipate this problem that there's a little bit of sulfuric acid remaining, and it probably never it may never dry completely. But I have spread it out here on this drying rack with a paper towel and then a piece of notebook paper just to see what happens, give it a couple more days um, out here in the air, I've, and uh, we'll check back. I may have to wash it very quickly with some cold water, and hopefully I won't lose too much, and rinse it that way to get the sulfuric acid off. But we'll see how it goes. So it's actually been four days, and... Uh, I've been drying this and stirring it a little bit every day. It seemed to be getting drier and drier. So on the third day, it was looking pretty good. So I got the idea of putting this incandescent lamp on it and giving it uh, some gentle heat. And it seemed to be a good idea, but I noticed after two or three hours, um, in the middle where it was the most intense heat from the lamp, it was starting to turn yellow, which would indicate that it was going to the anhydrous state. Now, according to Wikipedia, I think it said that only happens if you get it up to 330 Celsius or more. And I don't think that's uh, possible with this uh, heat source. But anyway, I shut it off and... Uh, then I let it set overnight and the color has turned back to the uh, original blue-green color. So it's rehydrated itself. So I don't know for sure what hydration state it's in, whether it's uh, hexahydrate or heptahydrate. But I think I'm going to um, end this project now. I'm going to do a final weighing and see just how much I have. So now I've placed all of the nickel sulfate in this little cup, and I'm going to weigh it. 51.63. So if I want to compare that to the theoretical value, first I'll do the hexahydrate calculation. That comes out to 99.1% of the theoretical amount. Now I'll do uh, the calculation assuming it's heptahydrate. That would be 92.7 percent of theoretical, but it may be a hydration of a mixture of both. So 93 to 99 percent somewhere, but that's pretty good. So there you have it, nickel sulfate.